So far in this series of videos where I realize I'm not nearly as good at driving as I thought, we've looked at racing sim setups from near the bottom of the barrel. Somehow, the stand is managing to be worse than the steering wheel. The mid-range used market. And in today's video, we're gonna have a look at the high end, namely this monstrosity I'm currently sitting in. But we still have a little bit of climbing to do before we get here. Now it's impossible to talk about oil baron type sim racing without mentioning direct drive, which as we discussed in the previous video, apparently is the best way to connect like a fake steering wheel to a motor to have it feel the most car-y. And I'm real curious to see if it's as much a step up from the other options as people say. Luckily, a company that makes direct drive bases, Moza, reached out and was kind enough to send a whole variety of direct drive stuff. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an entry level direct drive set and something quite a bit more high end. But the steering wheel bit and the pedals isn't the whole story when it comes to oil baron sim racing. The way that you mount that stuff is equally important so that it can really feel like you're sitting in a real car. And one of the companies that makes awesome cockpits, giggity, Track Racer, also reached out and sent over a real wild setup for us to mount all of our direct driveness to to have it feel real badass. But before we get to that, let's have a look at an entry level direct drive set. Ooh. With direct drive bases, one of the main specs you gauge their worthiness with is peak torque output, which basically tells you to what extent the motor can rip your arms off. The R5 has 5.5 Newton meters peak torque, which handily emasculates the very popular Logitech G29 from the previous videos, Poultry 2.1 Newton meters. Ooh, that's a real chubby gripped little wheel. It feels good, I like that. Whoa, that's so heavy. It's all metal. You can feel that there's a pretty serious motor in here. On the back, there's a whole bunch of connections for pedals, handbrakes, all kinds of stuff. And then finally, the all metal pedals, which I'm kind of struggling to get into the shot here, which, oh, What's really cool about them is you can change the position of the pedals along this base plate and you can buy a separate clutch pedal to add to this. Generally, the Moza ecosystem is extremely modular and upgradable, which is nice. With that, let's set it up. And after very much not being confused by the software installation and setup process, I was ready. The first thing I've noticed before even putting the wheel on is that the pedals do not like carpet very much. They really want to be mounted to a rig because it's, it's not very stable. Oh, game force feedback intensity. Let's put it on 50%. But before racing could happen, Assetto Corsa needed its own setup procedure before playing nice with the Moza kit. Oh, it's so smooth. And there's like very interesting feeling bumps and stuff. So this is at 50% power. Oh, so many little bumps. Everything feels so much clearer through the steering wheel because you can't feel the mechanism. Naturally, I then turned up the power. Oh, you can really feel the road. The way you feel the like wheels lock up is really crazy. Like when you brake real hard oh whoa whoa there's so much detail and after a whole lot more pleasure moaning while driving over some grass i decided to try some terrible drifting instead this feels so different oh <laughs> oh damn this feels so different to the g29 a you can instantly feel the additional power which I'm not really used to, to having to deal with. Yeah, I really need to get used to it, but it feels so much better. I then decided to try my hand at some beam NG, which was immediately terrifying. Oh, this is like table destroying stuff going on here. Oh my word. Despite turning the force feedback down, it was still going ham. I love how quietly this thing just destroys your desk. Oh, that's so much feedback. It's almost gratuitous, to be honest. This is how you drive a pickup, right? 
Oh, no, no, it's all broken. Oh, we're drifting our pickup truck in a field in Italy. Very exciting. It is busy tearing the desk apart, but that's part of the, the realism. Yeah, it looks like it's doing pretty well. We've lost some windows, but that's to be expected. Oh yeah, th these are not the correct settings to be using this wheel with. It feels like I'm driving on a teenager's face here. Oh! I then went back into the settings to see if I could tame the beast, which was better until it wasn't. It's way better now. Ugh. I then discovered the game-specific setting presets in Moza's Pithouse software. Those uh, setting changes made it a lot angrier, if anything. <laughs> this is the R5 as well. There's an R16 waiting for me in a box over there. I'm just gonna destroy my wrists with it. I have driven an old car and it does kind of feel like this. I'm not gonna lie. Like it does, it does feel like you're wrestling a bear in the way that this feels. I understand now why something like an R16 doesn't come with a desk mount because it would rip this desk apart. Oh, 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 whoa. Having survived another violent crash, I decided to try and mount the R5 base to the stand I got with my used setup from the previous video. Which despite the fact that the mounting plate of the stand looks like it took some buckshot to the face, still needed me to drill extra holes for mounting the base and the pedals. So mounting compatibility is really something to pay attention to. I also added the awesome brake upgrade for the SRP Lite pedals, which gives it a lot firmer brake feel. Finally, having the R5 mounted to something a bit sturdier made a huge difference. The pedals weren't walking around anymore, and Beam and G crashes weren't nearly as harrowing anymore. At least, that's what I initially thought. Oh! Oh! Oh, terrible things happened. What if... Oh, d oh no. Let me please change the... Oh my god, oh, there's so much vibration. Oh, Jesus. But with that, let's get to the big boy gear so we can see how much more you get for quite a lot more money. Oh. Track Racer really went to town. This, I don't even think this is half of it. It's all so heavy, lots of metal and stuff happening. It kind of seems like I'm building an actual car today. Now this is all of it. And by all of it, I mean just the track racer stuff. This doesn't include any of the Moza gear yet. I am so excited to build this. Bewildered by the massive boxes, I just opened all of it and hoped that the way forward would somehow make itself clear. Either way, it quickly became obvious this was a serious piece of kit. That thing is one piece. Where does- is that like the stand that holds the- holy crap. And then under that is a slightly less obscenely massive piece. Luckily, the instructions were very clear even for an idiot like me, and soon things were starting to make sense. I find the way the assembly works fascinating. You've got these huge pieces of extrude aluminium with these grooves in them, and then you have these little threaded ball bearings, which slots into the groove in the metal with the ball bearing holding it in place, and you can move it using that and you can kind of set it anywhere along there and then screw what the thing is that you need to screw down into it. That's a really smart way to make a system like this very modular. I then spent the next two days with a couple Allen keys and a whole bunch of elbow grease, screwing until my eyes watered. I just wasn't prepared for how physically demanding building this frame would be but at the same time, deeply satisfying. This is easily one of the most obscene things I've looked at on the channel thus far. I am super excited to finish it. Uh, I'm pretty close. I'm actually at the point where I need to start whipping out all of the Moza stuff so that we can get the mounting in order for that. Now, when it comes to the other Moza stuff, we have not just a round steering wheel, but it's a full-sized round steering wheel. It's a 13-inch in diameter one, which is nice and thick. And then in terms of pedals, they sent over their SRP racing pedals. Uh, we also have a clutch for it. They're very similar to the SRP Lite for the, the other setup, 
but the brake on this has an actual load cell in it, which instead of using the angle of the brake pedal to determine how much input you're giving, the load cell measures the force you're putting on the pedal, and it apparently feels a lot more like a real brake pedal. And finally, Moza's monstrous R16 bass. The R5 has peak torque output of 5.5 newton meters, whereas this has a wrist-shattering 16, strong enough to murder a small child. But what I find more interesting is the higher bit encoder in the R16, which gives it almost 10 times as many points of detail over the rotation of the wheel. Bang. Oh, whoa. That is absurdly heavy. Oh, oh, look at that thing. It's metal. I mean, that thing feels like it's made out of solid uranium. It is so sturdy feeling. The physics defying density of the R16 did make mounting a little bit of a hassle. However, mounting the pedals was the real struggle because of all of the mounting holes on the plate, which you very much need for universal compatibility. But finding the correct alignment for your pedals is like playing a Where's Waldo game designed by Satan. I ended up taking the plate off and mounting it to the back of the pedals, but then it turns out that some of the screws that Moza gave weren't long enough to make it through the industrial strength base. And by the time I bought long enough screws and mounted the seat, I was exhausted. Oh, I can finally sit in it. Oh, this is a crazy device. The next challenge was dialing in the steering wheel angle. First, I tried swapping to a front mount, which would let me get the steering wheel lower without impeding legroom. But infuriatingly, the Track Racer front mount wasn't compatible with the Moza base, and the Moza front mount wasn't compatible with the Track Racer stand. So I had to remount the 100 ton R16 to the top mount, but use Moza's extension rod to get it low and far enough back so so my knees had room. But once I attached the monitor mount, the three day construction process of this magnificent beast was finally done. Oh, that feels remarkably like you're sitting in a real car, which is very cool. Uh, I also like how adjustable this thing is. Although having said that, it is the most effort ever to adjust anything on it. It feels like moving a mountain every time just because of how heavy everything is and how many bolts it all requires. I am super excited to give it a try, so let's fire it up. As was the case with the R5, we had to tweak the crap out of the settings before we could get going. But at the moment, I have the base set at 40% power, which should put it just a little bit more powerful than the R5 at max power. That feels so much like it's attached to a real car. Oh, it feels really different. There's a lot more like variability in the type of feedback that it gives you. So you have this like really smooth tug that it gives when you can feel the weight transfer of the car. But then there's lots of tiny texture detail when you hit a curb. You can feel the weight of the car really well with this wheel. Let's turn the intensity up a bit and see what that does. Oh, that 10% made a big difference. At 50%, it's it's already scary. Like this is really strong. That's a frisky sounding car. I like that. One of the things that I really like about these direct drive bases is that you can clearly feel the character of the different cars. Next, a quick jump to 55% power and a terrifying old Lamborghini. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, oh, it really wanted to, to kill me there. I guess if you're a gorilla, you'd be really excited by it. <laughs> how strong this is. Then I put on my big boy pants and cranked it up to 70. Oh, no way. No way. And finally, I tried something even scarier than the mirror, which went well. Oh, oh, we've locked up. Oh, come on, turn into the corner. Oh, 
I feel like I'm gonna injure myself. This isn't fun anymore. Don't know what we've locked. Okay. Oh. It does actually save you the crash impact. I was worried I was about to lose my life there. My word. Now I've changed my seating position slightly. I've reclined the chair like one set down and it feels way more comfy now. Whoa, what? The R5 with this pickup truck, it, you're like wrestling it. Whereas here, it's so like soft and floaty. Look at that. And this is at 50%. So I think this is like eight Newton meters we're at. But Beeman G's violence quickly reared its ugly head. Okay, what about, ah, whoa. Okay, you don't want to hit a curb, clearly. Oh, that's cool. So you use the joysticks to like look around. Oh no, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It, it really makes you not want to crash. The force feedback is a lot angrier in BeamNG. Oh, and the moment you touch the accelerator in a corner with this thing, it's over. Oh, lock up. Oh, please stop locking up. Okay, we're good. I then decided to switch tactics from baboon to 80-year-old retired dentist. Fourth gear, there we go, that's nice and peaceful. Fifth, nothing terrifying happening here at all. Keep it between two and 3,000 RPM, otherwise you're stressing the engine, as my driving instructor would always say. This is so boring, oh my god, I need to... Oh, yeah, locking up, That's that's gotten me excited again. The arousal is back, very good. Now we're on a, a really small road, and you know what they say, the smaller the road, the more forgiving it is for gorilla behavior. See, this is fine. This is safe what we're doing here. A hundred and, oh, the, the ramps feel, oh, 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 no, things, are, oh. oh, I'm so scared. I wanna go, that was a mistake. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> This motor somehow manages to shake this whole frame. I don't, I don't know how it does it, because this frame weighs several times what I do, uh, but it is, yeah, it's, it's an angry thing. Now, after that amazing Beam and G showing, I have been comparing this crazy R16 setup to the R5 bundle we looked at earlier for the last week. And this behemoth rig is awesome, but its performance depends quite a lot on the game you're playing. Because if the game has terrible driving physics, you don't benefit from the epicness as much. With Assetto Corsa, for example, with its amazing driving physics, there's almost an eerie sense of the wheel being connected to a real car. There's so much detail and communication through the steering wheel. Don't get me wrong, Assetto Corsa feels great through the R5 as well, but it's kind of like going from 1080p to 1440p, if that makes sense. Whereas Beam and G's physics is violent, I think is the only way I can describe that. But then when you get to a game like Dirt Rally 2, the driving feedback is so much more muted than the other games, and I didn't feel nearly as big a difference between the R5 and the R16 in games like that. And the Moza stuff doesn't have official console support yet. Uh, there is an unofficial way to get it working, there's like a little device you can buy, which I will try out at some point, but as of now you can't plug a console into the Moza gear, which does limit your game's library further. And the main difference the frame makes is proper driving position, which is awesome, adjustability and sturdiness. The fact that you can just lay into the brake pedal without something shifting around gives you a real sense of confidence. Which brings me to the value discussion. Now, earlier in the video, I did tell you what all of the Moza kit costs. Uh, the combination is about $1,400, but we haven't discussed the Track Racer frames price yet. Now the frame I'm sitting in now is called the TR160S, which costs 750 US dollars. But that's just the base cost of the frame. You still need to add a chair, a monitor mount if you want that. There's a whole bunch of accessories you can add to it, which is pretty cool. I like the modularity, but it gets expensive quick. With all the accessories, this setup is about 1,400 US dollars, which with the Moza pricing, is almost $3,000, not including the monitor. That's just for the sim racing stuff, which is quite a lot of money. But Track Racer and Moza's ecosystems are both very modular, so offer a great upgrade path. So you can start with like the R5 bundle for $460, which I feel like is very good value for money. The Logitech G923, which is their current gear drive base, sells for about $400, 
and the R5 is way better than that. So that's like very good value for money. And if you add that onto a more budget rig or even a half stand, which Track Racer also has, and those half frames are really good if space is an issue. I feel like that is where the price to performance kind of peak is when it comes to sim racing stuff. But if you're like a Saudi prince and you really like sim racing or you've been slowly upgrading a rig for ages, getting to this point is real awesome if you play a Seto Corsa. With that, I've just been having so much fun with this. Clinging on for dear life as you wrestle an old Lotus Formula One car around the Nürburgring is an intensely physical experience and I love it so much. The next step is definitely VR because I think that'll easily elevate this experience to something underwear destroying. I think that that is going to be mind blowing considering the tactility of all of these peripherals. So subscribe if you want to see that and until the next video, Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Moza and Track Racer, for sending over this awesome stuff. And until the next video, bye bye.